This is the On the Pony Express podcast, hosted by Billy Embody. Brought to you by Epic Estate Wines. Walking strong on the Pony Express. A weekly segment with SMU alum, owner, vintner of Epic Estate Wines, Bill Armstrong. Epic Estate Wines, world-class wines from Paso Robles Wine Country. Learn more, Epic, E-P-O-C-H, EpicWines.com. And now your host. And now your host, Billy Embody. One, two, three, let's go. Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of Walking Strong. Bill Armstrong, I'm Billy Embody. We've got a big one today. Oh, my God. I can't believe this. I mean, we're going to spend half the podcast on accolades. <laughs> oh, I am just... Uh, I, you know, the Express. Okay. I'm nervous. I'm nervous. I was nervous. I was nervous last week when we had uh, Paul Rasmussen, for obvious reasons. You are my head pastor, my favorite pastor, <laughs> Paul. You know that. But dang, I've had a bromance with you since uh, 1979. So, we've been around a while. I know we have. There. We've been friends for a really long, <laughs> long time. time. Long time. So we have a lot to talk about today. For Mustang none of Nation, that stuff, though. None of that. None of that stuff. <laughs> okay. Mustang Nation, we have got so many stories to tell you, you about Craig, your history at SMU, et cetera, et cetera. And I am psyched. I have been psyched to have this for a long time. So anyway, um, let's get started. Yeah. You know what? We do have wine. Of course, we always have wine on this podcast. I have got an amazing wine. It's called Veracity because it's going to be nothing but the truth today. Veracity. Like, veracity, baby. This, I always look this, forward this, to seeing what you name these things. I, I, it's no, always, there's, you know, there's always a really good reason. Yeah. He comes then, up with some that are awful. I, I, I was trying to like, hey, wow, carry it into so my cool. life and into my house. And all, all, all I know I, is uh, this one here, this wine, if you could put sex in a bottle, this would be it. But I've never tried that. that. <laughs> I don't think you have. Uh, but, or, are you drinking with this today? Uh, no, I'm all set. I'm, oh, you, I'm good. You good? Yeah, you good? Thank okay. you. Okay. Appreciate the. You honor. know what? I understand. And yep. you, we can talk about that if you want. It's totally up to you. But uh, I remember back in the day when you were in college, we drank together. Yeah, we did. And we still have. I'll have yeah. a glass of wine. Yep. Yeah, it's not a problem. But I remember uh, first time I met you, I think we were you were playing quarters by Del House. Yeah. Yeah. I remember yeah. dropping. Is it, yeah. Dropping? I, and I seem to have lost. <laughs> 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 anyway, so anyway, this wine here is amazing. 2011 Veracity, Mauvedra, Grenache, and Syrah, and um, it's a, just a terrific wine. So anyway, um, tell me why you're not drinking. I think it's a really good. It's a really good. Story. Well, it's not that I'm not drinking. I have a glass of wine or two. It doesn't. It does not bother me. I, you and Liz and I, we've done that several times. But, you know, I have a brother who's an alcoholic, and uh, it's a, it's a vicious disease. It really, and is. I just you know I encourage if anyone has a family member or a friend. Uh, compassionately with love, man, and start out early. Try to catch it before the disease gets going, man. It's a 15 years I've been battling this with my brother. Oh, my. And, and he uh, was a hell of an athlete like Great you. baseball player, 10 years in Major League Baseball, uh, very wealthy guy. It does not discriminate, right? I mean, that's the thing no, about that's it. Uh, You're exactly uh, addiction right. and alcoholism. It's a, it's a tough deal. And to have all the money he has, but to have right now no peace of mind. No, oh, isn't that just so, the saddest you know. thing? You know what? I'm really glad you mentioned this because Paul said the same thing, surprisingly to me, at our last podcast. And I, I'm glad you have the op- opportunity to, to mention that because yeah, I'm in this wine business yeah. and it always does concern me because some people, whether it's genetically or whatever reason, just can't handle it. Yeah. And um, Well, God doesn't say anything. I, you know, I, I spent four years in Dallas Seminary. So, mm-hmm. I mean, I studied a whole lot about that stuff. And the thing that really stuck to me was – God says, hey, be of sober mind, always be willing, ready to provide an answer for your faith, for what you believe. And and so, that you know, there are times and situations where, you know, maybe I'm you and Liz and Marilyn and I are out and it's not a big deal. But I don't want to ever get caught with an opportunity to share my faith and not be of sober mind. Plus, the devil prowls around looking to devour his enemy. I know I'm one of his enemies. I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. And I know that the Satan wants to take me down. And if I don't have my guard up all the time, then that's a chance for that to happen. So nothing against drinking. You know, again, yep. God doesn't say anything about drinking. No. Well, you said that last week. You yeah. did that very well, by the way. I was looking, I was like, man, did, was Bill in seminary with me? Where did I see that? <laughs> Teaching from the holy page of Wikipedia. <laughs> I, I was, it was the biblical version of Wikipedia. Paul Russell looked at me and said, dang, I can't believe you're telling me about the Bible. <laughs> what you do, baby? <laughs> uh, you got to bring it up to modern times. Yeah. So, all right. Well, I'm really glad you mentioned that because that is really important. So. Um, I don't even know where to start. I, let, let's just start from the beginning of when I heard about you and then you come in here at SMU. I uh, grew up in Houston mm-hmm. and Stratford High, right? Yep. And you were always an athlete. I mean, you set the uh, uh, high school record for rushing one year, right? Yeah. Yes. Does that still stand? 
No, but now they're playing 16, 17 games. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah, I, I, I do it until 15. Christmas but I think you had like 2,500 <laughs> yards rushing your senior year, right? Okay, so, yeah. you know, the best team I ever played on, and I played on a Super Bowl team, you know, the conference championship teams here, you know, making it apples and apples. But it was just a great, unique football team. And I think arguably one of the best – High school football teams ever play in the state of Texas and Stratford, Stratford High School. Did you win the uh, the we high won school the state? Championship? Fifteen to zero, fifteen to zero, and we were really, really good for high school football. We were disciplined and we were methodical, and we got after. It. Unbelievable! I remember being here. I, I came to SMU in seventy eight, so you were recruited after my freshman year into my sophomore year, and I remember reading about Ron Meyer recruiting both you and Eric, and I'm just going, what in? Fuck is happening at SMU. <laughs> I was so excited because we had been reading about you yeah. and Eric, obviously. Yeah. And but what the genius of Ron Meyer was that he recruited Marilyn Arps the year before. Yeah. That was your girlfriend. Yeah. yeah. And so you talk about looking looking, you know, outside the box, brilliant. It's Find you know decision it, maker. And Billy, so so uh I had committed. Ron comes down to see me uh in July before my senior year of high school started. Mm -hmm. Walks into our apartment, sits down. I know my girlfriend, Marilyn, is already getting ready to go to college. Uh, you're ahead of me. And I wanted to go to SMU. And he says, young man, we'd like to offer you a scholarship. And I said, coach, I'll take it. And he goes, well, by God, that's great. That's great. Now, Ron tells a story. He walks out of the apartment, and he asks Steve Endicott, the recruiter, he says, is this guy really any good? <laughs> no way. He goes, he goes, why is he committing to <laughs> Why is he committing to us? Just this, jumping out all over this soon. And, and, it's not hard to get it all. <laughs> no. And I just, I, I didn't hold that. I, I'm in, Coach. Save it for me. And so uh, I honored the commitment. But Bear Bryant, Bryant at Alabama, they just won the national championship, and he he put a full court press on me, uh, recruited me. I and he knew that he had to get Maryland to transfer if he had a shot at it. Tried to get her to come over there. Tried to, out of SMU because she was a, a year ahead of you. Yes, yeah. and so yeah. she said, "No, sir." I, you, called her dad who was an executive at Exxon and he was, that made him mad. He was like, no, we're, we're by God, my daughter's staying at SMU. And so I said, Hey, oh, man. coach Brian, I'm staying at SMU. I don't think wow. I've ever talked to anybody who's been recruited by Bear Bryant. I mean, that was, had to have been, and like, that, that had, had to have been heady. Think of this, okay? been heady. So I walk into Bear Bryant's exit interview on a Sunday uh, to leave my recruiting trip in Alabama. I walk into his office and it's got, he's a chain smoker. Smoke is all over the room and he is smoking <laughs> one after the next. And I'm sitting here thinking, this is this is my exit interview with Coach Bear Bryant. This is Bear Bryant. This is the man. <laughs> and I, it was a very hard uh, way. I, you know, saying no to him was really tough. I bet. Uh, man, it was hard. But, uh, you know, hey, I'm glad I did. I'm glad how blessed I was to have uh, stuck to my decision here. Yeah. With my girlfriend that turned out 41 years later. So yeah, that's right. You had your life. 40th last yes. year. Yeah, 40th. Well, my wife 40th. and I are having our 40th here in a month and a half. Yeah. So you got married a year before I did. We married and, two really smart you know, women. Listen, you know, I, 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 I way, way out kicked my, I way out kicked my. No, 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 no. They out kicked their. Company. Oh, there. Yeah, that's right, Liz. That's right. That's Greg. Greg says yeah. you two guys are lucky. <laughs> I love that pitch. That's our right, so, so, so what is it like when you were in high school? You're going to SMU, and then you read in the paper. Eric Dickerson is coming to SMU. Were you thinking? I don't know. How did you feel about that? I mean, well, it, it, okay. So he, Eric, and I grew up like forty minutes from each other. Right. But we didn't know each other. He was in two A, and I was in the high level four A at that time. And so we didn't play each other. We read about each other. Uh, and so I, I mean, I had an, a confidence about my ability mm -hmm. too. You know, I didn't. I mean, Eric wasn't yet Eric mm -hmm. Dickerson mm -hmm. uh, in the Hall of Fame in the NFL. So I'm like, hey, you know what? Yeah, I, I'm going to have to compete when I go there. And there were several mm -hmm. other really good running backs that came in at the same time. And my attitude was, if we all get together and, and come together, we're going to be a great football team. And that's what I was interested yeah. in. So was yeah. Eric. Yeah, yeah. So were all the other guys who came right. together. So I didn't think, man, I'm getting ready to go to school there at Dickerson. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, you know, well, there was all the press at the time was saying one of you two were transferred. Yeah. Because you could, there's not enough balls in the backfield. Yeah. You know, that yeah. was what, what they were saying. But, you know, ironically, of course, you guys get tagged Pony Express. Yeah. When did they pick that? that well, okay. Name? So, so what's, what's interesting about that? When we came here, Ron Meyer had a pro offense, split yeah, backs, right. pro set offense. You know, now that was you know it was okay. I caught like eight or ten balls my first game, and I was I was bummed because I wanted twenty carries. And everybody. Said, by the Man. way, you were you were very underrated as a, re a receiving back, uh, running back. 
I mean, you really well, had great you. hands. You're, you're Christian McCaffrey before Christian McCaffrey. Yes, yeah. I, I would. Uh, so, so it, you know, the, he went to the I formation though our sophomore year, and that's when we really took off, and mm-hmm. and the Pony Express became what it was. Uh, you know, you never can't plan those things, right? And the fact that Eric and I were very friendly with each other at that time, and and love each other as you know, we're very close. Very to close. I've been with him a couple nights ago. I mean, we're just. I love the guy. He and and there's well, he a great what, respect. He is what he is, right? Yes, when you're he around is. Eric, there, as we saw on and Mustang Nation, you saw on the on the uh, podcast. You get what you get. You know what you I know? say about Eric? <laughs> Eric, I always tell people he's one of the smartest friends I have. Now, I'm not talking about the guy that's going to go to the engineering department. I'm talking about good, sound wisdom. Mm, right. Uh, Eric's got great advice, and so when he says something, I listen to him. Yeah. And so the fact that we had this relationship. <clears throat> We accumulated a lot of yards and we saved each other's bodies for later on down the road. That's right? true. And I know that that helped him gain those uh, yards in the NFL. So it was, it was just a good fit. It was a good time. I mean, you guys, I think I read where you had the, both of you averaged over 100 yards a game. And I think you had like 15 games where you both had 100 yards in the same game. I mean, it's, it's a crazy and we a lot of people tandem. so that people came in afterward. And so you wouldn't even play in the fourth quarter. We didn't know. There were many fourth right. quarters. We were not playing. But I remember always in, uh, in those And we only days. played 11 games back then. I mean, it wasn't like, you know, these kids today oh, get 14, 14 yeah. 15 good games. Point. I mean, are you kidding good me? Point. yeah. Uh, you had to get it done quick. But I remember at those games, you know, you always see teams do it now. They put their hands up, you know, fourth quarter. We're yeah. in best shape and everything. But when you were there and it was the Pony Express – you had warned the other the opposing team. Eric down. and I come off the field, and we would say many times in the fourth quarter, <clears throat> "They're tired. They're tired. They're having a hard time getting back to the line. We're getting ready to get them." You know, mm-hmm. and and because we're fresh, we kept going fresh. The tearaway jersey era, uh, our sophomore year, we they would rip jerseys off of us. We'd have to come out of the game. We we kept doing that. That was their strategy. No way. Yes, they. No did. way. They oh, strategized absolutely. to tear your jersey absolutely. away so that we had to keep going in and out and. <laughs> And <laughs> realize that's yeah, even that's a crazy. thing. And then realize that's even a thing. That was a crazy <laughs> thing. I still got a in, in uh stowed away somewhere. I've got a tearaway jersey. Oh, that's so those fun. were pretty unique. I need to get me a poster with the half a jersey torn away. <laughs> you can sign it and yeah. say. But uh that's unbelievable because uh it was it was probably the one of the most unique tandems in the history of college football, the Pony Express. Yeah. And, and Lance McElhaney with the trigger man on that, he took some hits for you guys. When he came in, he really did. He came in with a great confidence, and he could yeah. run that option. I mean, he was just yeah. – he was, he was. we knew it's called a five-yard pit, five yard pitch relationship with a quarterback. Wherever he goes for running the option, you would be five yards from him because he at any moment might kick it out. And uh, he made a lot of great plays for us. And, you know, the thing that was so dynamic about our team, Eric and I get a lot of the notoriety, but we had – so many good players on that team. Oh yeah, uh, we yeah. were loaded with. We were the best team going. Uh, years later, I'm I'm doing college game day with Fowler and Corso, and I'm standing on the sidelines during a, an Iron Bowl, Auburn Alabama game, and it was intense and great. Right, it was the place to be for for college football. And I thought to myself, this would have been great to have been a part of as a player. I said, but wait a minute, I was. You were because the Southwest Conference was the conference where everybody was. wanted to be. I know in that it. Time frame. And so uh, nobody remembers it the way we do because it was the Southwest Conference was really it was it like you said mm-hmm. yeah. you know real OU Texas all A&M, these great yeah, players in the state down. of Texas yeah. are going to, they're going to Michigan they're going to Ohio State they're going out to West they're yeah. going to East yeah yeah yeah, so, yeah 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 unbelievable all right so just I just had a trivia what was your favorite game. Texas uh, sophomore year. I was about to ask. I was about to <laughs> that was my favorite game. That's my favorite well, game, too. Yeah. Because it meant so much to us, right? But right? We'd lost for years. We'd never gone to Texas to beat them, and they were number two in the country. And we go down there, and and it's we bust down there. And, you know, and in the locker room before the game, uh, Lance Peterson, our, our center, he, he's, he's got a little plastic helmet in his hand. And he and he says, "This is why we're losing all the time to Texas. It's this logo. It's, and it's a helmet game." And he crashed it. And <laughs> I'm telling you, man, we game. I get goosebumps right now. We flew out of that locker room, and when we beat them in Austin, number two in the country, that proved to us in our locker room that we could do it. We were on our way. I think I remember you telling me. I think you and Lance and I were flying down to see Eric get the College Football Hall of Fame, mm-hmm. and he said in that game, I think it was in the third quarter, he said that your favorite run was when he came out and then flipped you. You said and he hit you like 
full stride as fast as you were going. Then you had like a huge yeah, run yeah, there. Yeah. That was in 50, 60 yard touchdown run. I think it's the fastest I've ever had a lot of long runs. And I was like, I don't even remember my feet touching the ground. You were just going. It was just gone. And, and that was just a, a memorable moment. Uh, for me and for all of us, uh, alums, students, oh, yeah. all of us. My wife happening. will tell you to this day that her favorite sports moment of her life, she was in Austin and she stormed the field out. This year? Oh, yeah, yeah. I was at I was I was at I was at I was at SMU in Japan, and I, so I missed it. And on a Monday morning, it says biggest college uh, uh, upset of all time. SMU <laughs> defeats uh, Texas. So Liz is in school here, yeah. Yeah. studying rocks, and she's the one that found all the oil. Yes, you know? yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it finally's coming out. Yeah. <laughs> it's all the. Anyway, I think you had a big game. We did like 150 yards that game yeah, or something. It was, something a, crazy. it was a big game, and uh, but but for all of us, it just it just gave us the confidence that you needed. You know, you, we'd read about ourselves as a team. We've been rated highly, but we had to go do it. And all of a sudden, we did it on the field against them. And at that point, uh, it was Katie bar the door. We were ready to go. Oh, that's what amazing. Does that, that confidence level around the team look like once you kick that door down against Texas? I mean, is it just? We've got this. We've got this. Not throw the jersey out there anymore, no. but what's the team like? Expectations. You have to expect to win before you can win. You have to have confidence, inner confidence. And we knew we'd been working hard to make that happen, you know, strategically for, uh, in our locker room. But when you experience success, it just feeds upon itself. And it's there is a great deal of momentum. I mean, you, you can't go through an offseason in the preseason. You can go through games and you lose. Well, you, that, that establishes a routine. If you have six or seven bad business deals in a row, all of a sudden you start thinking about it. Oh, you don't have, well, no, have no, well, confidence. no confidence. No confidence. And, and, it, and it spills into everything that you do. And Not that I've ever had five bad business deals. <laughs> I, just, I just want Mustang Nation to know. It's all in. Maybe, maybe two. Like, maybe two. <laughs> okay. Anyway. I love anyway. that. That's great. That's great. Hello. Talk about somebody else. All right. So that's your, that's your, that's your, that's your favorite game. What was your, what was your least favorite game because i've got mine well probably tying texas um our our senior year i guess it was. okay that's uh, right that was yeah, we only had that tie we yeah, were 10-0-1 yeah, right yeah, that year yeah yeah. Yeah. yeah and man that was that was a tough deal uh we beat them both times we played in austin and and you know didn't get it done no we we, we got beat that day nine to three and the tie was our senior year against Arkansas. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And, you know, those games, that just keep you from uh, having the success that you really wanted to have and then plan for. Uh, I hated that. We beat them in Austin, and we couldn't beat them here. Yeah, and that's something. So my, uh, my least favorite game, believe it or not, was the Miracle Bowl, Holiday Bowl 1980. Mm -hmm. You guess, does Mustang Nation, do you remember this? Mm -hmm. 1980, we play BYU. In the holiday bowl, it was like December 25th or 28th or something, or right before Christmas, I think it was. We had a 21 point lead with 20 point lead with two and a half minutes to go. And they came back and beat us. Jim McMahon. Jim McMahon. They had a whole roster full of NFL players. Too. Oh, yeah. Steve, so yeah. Steve Young backed him up. The, the team. By the way, Andy Reid. Yes. Coach of the Kansas City Chiefs was it was yep. played guard for BYU. Yeah, yeah. I, I love. <laughs> I bet Clark that didn't game, know that. Yeah. So that game, <clears throat> um, Eric and I both had over 100. I had 200 something yards. And after the game, they come and I get uh, the MVP came of of the game. And co MVP with Jim, Jim McMahon. Jim McMahon. Yeah. And I'm like, okay. And then later went into the Hall of Fame for the Holiday Bowl, and I would give that up. You know, yeah. to go back and to have won that game, and P it was just like a, it was a surreal it moment, weird. really weird moment. But it was a great game. Forty six, forty five. Uh, ESPN has it in the top ten games of thought, all time. It, and so, so, from that standpoint, yeah. I'm right. glad I got to play it. Right. We're playing the Rams uh, when I'm with the Patriots, uh, my first or second year at LA, and we throw a hail mary at the very end of the game to beat them. We we succeed and catch it. I, and Eric and I sprint to the middle of the field. And I go, man. I'm on the winning side. <laughs> He's like, man, man. <laughs> uh, but, That's funny. I didn't realize that. That's good. Because he's playing for L.A., right? Yeah, that's right. Time for the yeah. yeah. That's unbelievable. Well, it was so great. Uh, I, I, it's hard. We're trying to reestablish that Pony Express kind of mentality here at SMU now. And I think Rest doing a fabulous job. Yep. And by the way, you're really 
getting involved with the program now? Because mm-hmm. you had a long time where you and Eric and Harvey were not. Yeah. But now you guys are getting back, and it's really important for the team. Mm-hmm. It's really important for the kids. It's really important for the, the entire institution. It's yeah. great to Thank see you coming back. Thank you. It's good to be back. You know, uh, there was a period of time that it just felt a little odd. Yeah, sure. Uh, it was odd. Oh, you know, know. we. And, and I mean, at some point you just be gone with it. And uh, now there's a freshness and newness here. We've got the ACC to be excited about. Rhett's doing a great job. Mm-hmm. There's going to be a transition though. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's going to take time. And I, I had a guy ask me the other day, what do you think about next year? Man, excited, man. We're going to do really well. I said, I think, you know, we go six and six. It's going to be a good year. That was you saying, I mean it. You're honestly, saying six and six. Six and six. I mean, I've had a guy with like, higher expectations. What do you, he goes, are you kidding me? And I said, no, I'm not kidding. I mean, we are getting ready to play every week. It's going to be uh, a challenge. Yeah. And there are no layups. And it's a tough schedule. You, so I'm, and it's not that I'm disparaging Rhett or the players. It's reality. Uh, those guys, like Boston College in that bowl game, they I got know. a really good player over there. Yeah, they you know? And every team's got two or three of those really good players. There's a reason they're in that conference. We have to elevate everything we have at this school. From the PR to the equipment to the 80s, everybody has to be evaluated. No, totally Are right. you on that level? Yeah. You know, it's you know, if you want to have a great boulevard experience and all that stuff, okay, great. And you go eight and four, great. You know, no, that's not if we want to aspire to be mm-hmm. champions in a major conference, you got to step up everywhere. Yeah. I totally agree with you. I mean, we we're we're and you're a hundred percent right. Like for example, this room we're in right now, which is what they call the players' lounge, recruiting lounge, yeah. recruiting lounge. Between now and August, this is going to be moved to the Gary Weber End Zone Complex, wow, good, good. And, and we're putting in a uh, an ESPN TV facilities in here. It's like a fifteen million dollar facility that's going to be in here. So it's going to be because we have to be ACC ready, uh-huh. even for uh, you know uh, the network and everything else. So again, this is this is all aspects yeah. uh, of 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 it. But uh, let's talk a little bit about the players that you're we're seeing now coaching uh, in the backfield. We've got LJ, who is I think has got great great potential. He's sort of getting Houston better this area, year. Yep, Houston yep, area yep, guy, yep, yeah, really yep, good. Good player. Uh, we got uh, Kamar, who I still think has got mm-hmm. like tons of, tons of potential. Mm-hmm. And uh, Knightley, I mean, we got uh, Jalen uh, Knightley. Uh, yeah, yep. Jaylen, Knight, I, mean, I hear Minnesota. we got a kid coming in from another kid from Miami, Rashard Smith. Yep, that's he a that right guy. Right I he's hear a he's a pretty good player. Is yeah. he here? Is he here in spring ball? Yes, he's. Uh, Running back, wide receiver, but in the running back room, he's okay. a little thicker than you'd think for a mm. guy that probably mm. should be in the slot at most schools. But fourth nationally in kickoff return yardage. Mm, that's good to know. Last year, which so he's speed, kind of strong. so he's super speedy. He's fast. Okay. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. Running back, wide receiver, kickoff return. Right. Right. Used them all over. So yeah. I, I kind of look at it like this. Um, <clears throat> It's, it's, it's not a running back by committee, but that's what it was last year. We had a room full yep. of guys. Uh, we had the receivers by committee last mm-hmm. year. That, yep. And it's, and, and, and there's, so there's good and bad to that. The good thing is, you know, you got a lot of guys that are contributing and they're not sitting around moping in the locker room like, you know, man, I got to go to practice today. No, I might be playing. Right. So that, that keeps yeah. everybody going, right? That's the team concept, right. this whole thing. The downside is you need explosive players to win. Right. You, Rasheed Rice was an explosive player for us, dependable mm-hmm. player for us. You can't just go get a Rasheed Rice. I mean, obviously, right. those are unique guys. But you got to have two or three difference makers right. on defense and on offense. Right. Somebody that you can't block on defense and somebody you can't stop on offense. Right. Because when it's third down, whoever converts or stops wins the game. And in this league where we're heading right now, will a running back or receiver by committee work? Uh that's yeah. good. That's a good point. I actually, actually remember when I talked to James Prochet yeah. about that very thing. I said, yeah, I was, sitting right here. I was sitting at this very table and I was like, one, we don't have a James Prochet. We don't have a, mm-hmm. you know, uh, you know, Rushy. And he voted for the committee being the good. But mm-hmm. I, I, I kind of, I'm in your camp. Again, it's you not gotta, bad. I, I know. As a but team, I, I kind of agree bad. with you. But you know like, what? Yeah. When you're playing Florida State, you're playing Virginia, right. and North Carolina. Like, and you know, one, one or two guys who have problems. I want to know. Yeah. I want to know that guy's going to go. Yeah. And he's going to make a 15 yard play into a 55 yard play. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, that's you just that's can't, you can't he's, drug. He's that, he's that, he's that type. Yeah, the stuff he did in Miami is limited. It's crazy it, stuff. Because they probably didn't use him maybe the way Rhett did when he was there, but it's all explosive uh-huh. fun uh-huh. stuff. Uh, that's, yeah. that's all that's three fantastic. plays from the signing day event were like 60 yard. Yeah. Run. 
catch. Oh, no kidding. Return for oh, fantastic. Yeah. All right, before we get back to SMU, I want to, I want to make sure I get the rest of your career. Okay. Because uh, you shocked everybody, and you left, you, went, you left SMU to go to the USFL, which <laughs> – by the way, uh, you were the fourth pick. Fourth pick, yeah. Eric ahead, was seventh pick. You were ahead of you had Eric. But I but at that time, so in that and that you have to go back. I have to always put myself back in that context so that I don't second guess myself and say, Well, you were dumb for doing that. Um I it was it, I when I went went to lunch in Washington, I met my agent at the airport in Dallas. We played the cotton bowl a couple of days previous to this draft. That I had known was coming, but I hadn't paid much attention to it. That was the, uh, the conference was against Pitt. Against Pitt. So yeah, I'd driven down to Houston. I'm at home, uh, my parents' home. And my agent calls and says, hey, you've been drafted. And you're the fourth guy taken by Washington. And we need to go out of respect to Washington. I said, okay. I drove back to Dallas, got my stuff here at the house, made him at the airport. And I said, are we going to the state or D.C.? <laughs> I didn't know. Yeah, I didn't I would, know. Do, I would think the same I've only thing. been to Alabama on my visit. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, 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 but, but within moments of me being at the luncheon with this table of owners uh, for this Washington Federals, I was intrigued. I said, holy moly, these guys are, they're serious business. Bill Walsh was calling heavily, trying to get me not to do this and sign, mm-hmm. calling the, my agent and say he had the number nine pick in the first round. In the and, NFL. But there wasn't any the guarantee. NFL. We kept sure. saying, how are you going to guarantee if I, if I, pass on this monetarily it was letters of credit in the bank as you know it's like it's not, I, you know i just had to show up on the date of the maturity of that each one of those i was going to get paid i was the highest paid player to enter pro football at the time when i signed it were you really a, a month wow. later oh, no so kidding i was slotted yeah. back in those days it was slotting and i knew if i were first round pick in the nfl it's four years 1.2 million bucks that's right. the way it was going to be these guys gave me two million dollars with letters of credit in the bank Oh, no and, and I remember reading all the huh. NFL guys were like, man, Hick hadn't done his squat and he's higher paid than me. Well, well you know, well, Herschel good. Walker, <laughs> he <laughs> yeah. me. about a month later, he, yeah, just, yeah. he took the, the crown. But I'm glad I did it because it ultimately led me to New England and playing for the Patriots. They had drafted that year. Well, you got to give Ron Meyer all the credit in the world because he knew you had already yeah. uh, signed with the Washington Federals, mm-hmm. but yet he then went ahead and yeah. drafted you. So he'd have my rights. So he'd have your rights. Yes. Very smart move. So Jim part. Kelly – uh, Herschel, the guys who had been had signed with USFL, NFL team started taking us in the seventh round, right? So that they could have our rights. Just should something fall right. apart, right? Yeah, brilliant yeah. deal, and I was so thankful for that. Yeah, and that's good because you knew Ron really well, yeah. and you know, blah yeah. blah. And then ironically, you didn't go to play for New England, mm-hmm. and you, of course, you crushed it at, at New England. Uh, but Ron was fired. Yeah, uh, uh, your first year with New England, he was he was okay. Fired. So I'll tell you the story now. <laughs> okay. now, now for me, now I love Ron. But it was killing me that he was my coach because I get to New England and in two days they had an all pro running back, Tony Collins. Tony was a really good player mm-hmm. and a locker room favorite. But I beat him out and I was better than I see. I just come from re- playing against Eric Dickerson and earning my playing time every day. So I wasn't yeah. intimidated about it. Yeah. Yeah. But he wouldn't play me. And so I'm like, wow. I mean, I did five carries or four carries and it was, you know, like this. And so he gets fired at the midway point. We're five and three. And we're on the plane flying to Denver. Raymond Berry is our story. Raymond Berry is our SMU. Raymond Berry is now our coach. <laughs> Raymond walks on the, uh, down the aisle of the plane and he bends over to my deal and he says, Hey, you're starting tomorrow. And I was like, okay, right on. Here we go. And I ran for 120 <laughs> yards. I had like 800 yards in the second half. Yeah, if I had a and, really and so good second half, if, 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 if I had started that whole year, I had zero down my mind. I was healthy. We had the system. I'd had 16, 1700 yards. I was a runner up NFL in rookie of the year. And I would have for that, sure. That you're, you're running, runner up. I, would, I was a runner up. So oh, Eric kidding. got it the year before. Huh. I would have got it the next year because yeah. I'd waited to get there. So oh. I don't know. I'm, uh, Ron was a heck of a coach. I hated that he got fired, but it did benefit me. Uh, I, I didn't know. I didn't know. Wow. What I said. Yeah. Of course, then the next year, you next run year. for what, yeah. 1,220 yards yeah. or something? Yep. Yeah. All pro. Yep. And I got was that, was that the year you went to the Super Bowl? That was the year we went to the Super Bowl, okay. and um, uh, Vince Lombardi, NFL Offensive Player of the Year, which, you know, at the time, I remember showing up, and I was like, wow, this is really pretty cool. And uh, I, we had great expectations in New England. Uh, we all had momentum, but uh, our offensive line changed. Uh, <laughs> our, in the sense that our great lineman, John Hanna, retired, and the other guys decided to get off steroids. 
And man, we got <laughs> smoked up front. I picked a bad time to suck <laughs> shit, man. My like, comments hey, on this one. How about you guys? Let's, let's maybe, you know, think about getting back into this thing. We just were not strong up front. And we, we I couldn't get to the line of scrimmage. Oh, that's nuts. And man, I, then I got beat up. And, uh, you know, it, it happens to a lot of people. You, you either get lucky and you have the mm-hmm. eight, nine, 10 year career, or you don't. Yeah. And, uh, I'm glad I got to do what I did. And you had one year in the USFL, and you had four in the NFL. Was five. It was? five. five in so you had six years. Yeah. And you know, players. obviously, you yep. did really uh, did it really well. I mean, I, I guess the the year you had 1,200 and some odd yards. This is on Wikipedia, so I'm not racist for saying this. Uh, it, it, it took 25 years before another white running back got 1,220 yeah. yards in the league. Yeah, it was you know, unique. Just, you know, I think I, I was in an era. Where, you know, I've talked about this. It's like, you know, in my time back then, if you're a really talented uh, black athlete, then they weren't thinking of you as a quarterback. They put you at receiver or or running back Mm -hmm. or defensive back. And if you were a white, talented guy, most of the time they put you at quarterback. And, Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, but I had, I was in an all white high school. They didn't have an option. (laughs) So I got to stay and carry the ball Uh. in high school. And then when I got here, I just, I I had the momentum that kept me in and uh, I got a chance. Well, you know, you're under, underselling your athletic ability because you were drafted to go into the pro baseball coming out of high school, right? Yeah. Was it the Phillies? The Phillies, yeah. The Phillies? What are you, first baseman? I was first, but I'd have been an outfielder, left or center field. Were you a better hitter or a better receiver? Or a better, uh, hitter. Uh, be, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, huh. yeah, I could hit the deep ball and I could run. And uh, you, what, but, what was your 40 time? Well, I always answer that this way. <laughs> I could never outrun Eric, but there were only – a so – Whatever the speed was for that day, wherever you were timing, whatever the fastest time, if it was 4-4, I was a 4-4-5. If it was 4-5, I was a 4-5-5. If it was 4-3, I was a 4-3-5. I was just behind whoever the, the fastest guy fastest was. Guy was huh? And I used to ask Eric, we'd get out and run and sprint. I could not beat him. I'd, I'd say, man, let's go again. Let's go again. He goes, CJ, you can't outrun me, man. <laughs> I, I, I can totally hear you yeah. saying that. Man, yeah, you go outrun me. I, was, I couldn't, but um, that is something else. But it's, here's the irony: it's like so. You guys were splitting time your senior year. Eric was on our podcast, and he basically said Herschel didn't earn that Heisman yeah. because he had yeah. seven yards, seven and a half yards of carry or whatever. Yeah. But you look back on the statistics of the two of you combined. If it had only been one of you, right? Either one of you could have won the Heisman. Yeah. If it had been, I think I came in like tenth, and it was like you know, you know, but you know, you you, hey, uh, they they don't remember who came in second, third, fourth. Uh, Of course, only Herschel. And and but Eric has his memories, and he knows what he had. Yeah. And uh, I I know what we could have had if I'd have done Mm -hmm. it on my own. But you could have gotten hurt too. Uh, that's so, true you know, no doubt and, no. and of course also a little known fact is that senior year our punter got hurt and you took up the punting responsibilities yeah. halfway through the season yeah. and you were the sixth rated punter in the country yeah you know that's, that's the one nuts. thing that I mean, I, i'm fired up i never i uh, i was always a backup punter never punted in the nfl uh but i was first team all conference punter and runner and i you know i take I, that was something was pretty cool i worked hard uh on my form going into our senior year and did you know you're a backup punter uh, in the NFL? No, when you were backing up at SMU. Well, SMU. yes, okay. yes. But and I was the protector for the punter, and it was actually my junior year. We uh, I blocked a, a, a rusher into Eric Kafis was our punter, and blew his knee up. So, so I you did that. I, I, I did, you did it on purpose. Oh, yeah, you did it on purpose. I was thinking long. That's term. why you went to the seminary. You felt so guilty said, about that. Terrible. You know, they're all these Lord, years. forgive me. I have. <laughs> 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 So, uh, but my junior year, the end of that uh, that year, I I was an okay punter, but I was a three step punter, and I went to a two step approach, which eliminated a lot of the mistakes. And um, yeah, I, one punt shy, you have to have a hundred career punts to qualify for the all time NCAA top ten punts. I was one punt shy. I had ninety nine career punts. Stop or, it. Or I would have been in the top ten uh, punters. punters. Yeah. No yep. kidding. Yep. Yep. So that was that's man. That's kind oh, man. Of that is kind of a crazy deal. Crazy. I didn't know that yep. little trivia. Yep. A little trivia for you. That's unbelievable. All right. So I've gone to that's, you. That's the, uh, vera- the veracity of this show. See, <laughs> look at this. He brings it the up. Veracity of this up. show. <laughs> if, if he was drinking, if he was, he would say this is the best wine he's ever had in his life. So, <laughs> all right. So uh, you do all that. Uh, I'm going to, we're I'm going to save an entire podcast on your sports casting career. Okay. Cause to me that, 
is so spectacular and so interesting okay, because you. you're ahead of the game on, on so many levels on that. But I want to save that. Okay. But, uh, you know, you obviously have this awesome wife. You have four four kids, four right? Kids, yeah. How many grandkids? Eight you grandkids. Eight grandkids. Yeah. I have nine. Yeah, I know you do yours. Mustang Nation, I'm telling you, you know the the worst thing about being a granddad? You're sleeping with a grandma. That's wrong. But we're not sleeping with bad grandmas. <laughs> no, they're not we got good grandmas. grandmas. We got good bad. grandmas. No, they're hot grandmas. Honey, you're a hot Here, grandma. Here's what yeah. I would say about this. The veracity of this man. <laughs> Nine grandkids. Are you kidding me? That's where that bottle oh, came from. Oh, that's right. I need Mr. it. I, I need Mr. it. You deserve I need, it. I need. I deserve it. I deserve it. <laughs> but your uh, your son, uh, not to brag on uh, just one of your four kids, but uh, is a Navy SEAL. Navy SEAL, yeah. yeah. You know, it's a crazy career. Uh, he's in his ninth year, and you know, I don't care if you're a Republican or Democrat or don't care about anything. Our country, we have some men and women who sacrifice a lot. Oh, yeah. Our men and women are awesome. And we need to support the military. And um, Andy's got a really crazy career. Uh, ninth year, they train hard. Ninth, ninth year as, 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 as a, a SEAL. As a SEAL. Just, yeah, wow. ninth year. Oh, wow. and, um, and so, you know, they're out doing things that are nuts and they're, they're nuts in their training. You and Maryland have to be just in the back of your mind, a little bit afraid, right? I mean, just, you know, they're so, they, but you know what, here's my comfort. Their training is precise. Mm -hmm. they, they, they don't accept, their they don't accept their so. expectations of each other is off the charts. By the way, that type of mentality mm -hmm. could be applied to football teams yeah. here. You know, I mean, you kind of think I would love to have you come to the yeah. SMU team and say, let right. me tell you about the seal mentality. Yeah. Oh, uh, as far as the, t you know, uh, yeah. You're on a talk about a close knit group. Yep. I mean, you know, Those guys are, yep. there are not many of them and they are dependent on each other. That's Absolutely. why it's so hard to become one. Uh, but yeah, hey, you know, you, you've just got to, uh, you know, we, Andy's got a great faith and he knows that he, God's got him doing what he's supposed to be doing. And uh, his wife is awesome. They have three kids. And so, yeah, we're proud of him. Unbelievable. He's a seal with three kids. Yep. Jeez. Yep. Yeah. yeah. What'd you call those? That keeps pumps. them in the teams, mates. <laughs> seal pumps, whatever. <laughs> Hey, Here, sir. <laughs> amongst all that, Craig is actually an accomplished author. Yes. Yeah. I haven't written anything. Yeah. I've written a few poems. Yeah. You know, they're just, yeah. I, could, I, could, I could recite a few. <laughs> there once was a man from Nantucket. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 sorry. Anyway, what's up with this book? Well, you know, uh, I, this, this is really, I, I wrote it after about 2009 in the spring. I went on a tour and I've been doing college football for a long time and as a broadcaster. So I, I said, you know what? I'm going to go visit the top 20 schools in the country on my own in the spring. We never did anything in the spring at ESPN. And uh, I, I would call the coaches, Urban Meyer, whoever it was. I would call them and I would say, hey, can I come see you? Bob Stoops, can I come see you? I'm on my own. I'm not coming with cameras, hmm. nothing, just myself. I just hang out with you guys, do the meetings, have dinners, and just hang out. So who were the, what were the programs you picked? Uh, I, well, the top ones, I went to the Southeast, but I did the Georgias and the Alabamas, the Tennessees, and, okay. and I would hit the Florida and the Florida State. And then you, and I made my way up to Ohio State, Michigan, Notre Dame. So you're going to watch the, all be the, top the, the best of the, the best. best of the best. I took the best of the top 20 teams, and I, and I would spend some time with them in the meetings and hearing them and the coaching and the transitioning. And, and the evolution of college football takes place in, college, in the spring. Oh, this is really an interesting time for this podcast because we're in spring ball right now. Yes. And this is a really good way to talk about it because, you know, Rhett says the same thing. It's like spring ball really sets up what's going to happen uh, in, in the fall. Mm -hmm. So uh, keep going. I just want to remind everybody that because it's – you know, So, so what, what a coach can't do that I was able to do, I'm able to see all this talent. Then I went to USC and UCLA and I did all the Oregon and all that stuff. I'm able to see and compare. I could walk on a football field and immediately know who had talent or didn't have talent. Oh, no kidding. I could immediately know who was coaching and who was just shouting. It became really clear and obvious to me. Huh. And so uh, I write about that in the book. I write, I write about the experience of the travel. I called my boss at ESPN, Ed Placey at the time. And I, and I said, hey, yeah, here's what I'm doing, man. He, and he was following along with me on the phone. How's it going? Really? Yeah. He met me out at, in the West Coast. And soon thereafter, all of a sudden, ESPN is doing spring college football. I'm announcing, we're doing, announcing the games. games. We're yeah. in, I'm full house at Alabama. Yeah. Mark May and Reese and I are announcing the 95,000 fans, and we're announcing it. It's, it, it's absolutely uh, the evolution. It's really where it happens. And here's what I would say about this. I learned a whole lot on this. 
It's the competition in spring. Right. It isn't just going through the drills and doing them right. It's competing. The receivers competing against each other. Right. Offense against defense. It set up everything. I'm walking off uh, Notre Dame's field. I've been there a couple of days, and Charlie Weiss was their coach at the time. Uh-huh. They were very polite. Sure. I just left Florida. And Aaron Hernandez and Urban Meyer and Tim Tebow, those guys, okay? And I left and I watched Notre Dame and they were really polite. And each team would ask me to speak to the program and et cetera. And, um, and Charlie called me on my phone as I was going to the airport. And he said, hey, what do you think about my boys now? Truth. I said, man, I said, coach, you got some really respectful, good young men. But you're not competing at practice. He goes, what do you mean? I said, they're going through the motion. They're, they're doing everything hard, fast and all this stuff. But they're not competing. There's a winner and there's a loser. Every snap, there's a block or not a block. There's a tackle or not a tackle. There's a touchdown or not. It, there's a winner and a loser. And if huh. you don't have that mindset on every single snap, you're not going to win. He goes, no kidding? I said, yeah. I said, wow, I'd start, that's I'd start fascinating. Practice. I'd start I'll getting after it. This is all good for Rhett. Rhett, Lashley, I know you're watching this. <laughs> <laughs> not, Rhett and I are really close, and I'm telling you, he's going to listen to this. Hey, I'm going to tell you something that I did write in this book. I had to go back and look at it to remind myself what the heck was in it. But uh, I talked about a playoff back 14 years ago, and I said there are going to be 12 teams. There's going to be a playoff no system. Way. And I talked about the system back then that we had in college football. I wasn't condoning it, but I wrote and I said, if you're a, a, a five-star player back then coming out into college football in my era – you were going to get a car. You were going to get $50,000 cash and $1,000 a month. What are the NIL guys getting today? Mm-hmm. Car, yeah. $50,000 yeah. and 1000 bucks a month. Right. You know, they're, get, they're getting taken care of. And I call it like it was back then. It was a cartel. Uh, it was an, 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 an antitrust. Yeah. And, yeah. and I knew it was going to get blown up. Mm. And and I talked to Bill Hancock and all those guys as they were contemplating all this stuff. And I was telling them these things. And I was like, man, you, you, it's, it's obvious so if much you, money. See, you you guys are robbing these kids, man. Right. This is their pro football league. Yeah. You know, and 99% are not going to go play in the NFL. So why shouldn't an 18 to 21 or 2-year-old make money? Right. While they got it. They're not going to go play in the NFL. Yeah. But they're going to go blow their body up. Now we're going to go to to 14 team playoff system and we're going to play 16 or 17 games. Yeah. Then and and it's it is what it is. It yeah. is a junior NFL. It is. It is the minor leagues of the pro. Mm-hmm. It really is. And um, I think anybody that owns an NFL team would tell you that. You know, it's just the way it's gone. Any I mean, any crazy stories from the NIL days? In our, before, uh, before in the was, pre-NIL days? Yeah. yeah. SMU <laughs> was NIL, right? You know? you know what? I watched the 30 for 30 uh, Pony Excess. And uh, I remember – So know. when those when, – when, uh, when they called me to ask if I would be willing to do the uh, interview for that show, they're going to do – I said – I'll only do it if you tell the truth. Be be honest about what you find out. That you know, that is that we weren't the only people doing that, and it was the standard way of business back in that day. Didn't make it right, didn't make it wrong, but we were selectively punished for what happened. Okay, so I don't know all these things. So I'm watching the show. I announced I was doing Seattle. I, was, I did a uh, Washington Oregon. You're watching game. the 30 and so 30 I get 30 30. I get delivered to me uh, a DVD to my hotel room and I've got like five hours before I have to get on a plane to go fly across the country to do a nut, go back to ESPN. I said, you know, I'm going to watch the first part of it. I plug it in, I put it in and I'm like, huh, what? I mean, there were things going on. I was like, some players, I was like, what? People think you're lying. Yeah. You, know, you don't walk around and say, Hey, I didn't go. Hey, Eric, what are you getting? Me? Of course not. Yeah. No, you don't. You know, yeah. you know, so, I mean, you know what? I mean, nobody's done that in any business now. No, I mean, it's just no, like, you know, even on even yeah. if you're on a company, you don't walk around to the other VPs or yeah. you know whatever and say, "Hey, yeah. what are you making?" Because I'm, yeah. you, know, you don't do that. Yeah, how you do it? Yeah. So I, I learned a lot back then, but it was just the it was the era that it was, and um, and I'm glad now these players are starting to get taken care of. But we do need, and at some point, it's going to happen. There's going to be a players' association form it's coming. for men and women's sports and collegiate athletics, so that there's a voice at the table. There's long-term care protections. I'm not talking about negotiating. There will be a revenue sharing arrangement. There has to be. It is what it is. It's coming. And uh, it's coming. And, and, and accept it and let and get. Let's go. Yeah. You made a yeah. great point about sometimes these kids being robbed, and especially some that can really command money. I was talking with a couple of players, and they said, you know, the one thing we hear to your point about not walking around saying, "What are you getting? What are you getting?" They talk about who takes care of you mm. and who actually follows through, mm. and I think that's important mm. when when. This discussion is had. There are a lot of schools out there that 
mm-hmm. empty promises on various levels. Here's, I've, here's, I've heard that from so many yeah. different uh, programs. Yeah. That, you know, I was promised all this stuff. So okay, so he, at SMU, and, we and cannot be there. taking out rug out from yeah. them. So yeah. there's a players association. There's a voice mm-hmm. at the table to represent that person mm-hmm. who got uh, taken advantage of. That's why at SMU we have something that other folks can't offer. I know we've got this life after ball uh, program that we have here, Mm -hmm. but for all students, we're small in size, but we are substantial. And and you just need to understand if you come here and play at SMU, you're going to get coached up. If you got the talent, you're going to make it to the NFL. Mm -hmm. If you don't have it, you're not going to make it to the NFL. And 98% of you or so are not going to get there, but we can prepare you for success after college. And it's so important that we do that for these young men. Mm-hmm. And young women, you know, in the, because I think as our as our institution, as our inter, uh, university, we owe it to them. Yeah, you know, because we're getting a lot out of them, and we that's the type of young men that I want coming to SMU, where they kind of go, you know, if I make it to the NFL, it's great, yeah. but if I don't, I want to make sure I'm prepared for life after. Yeah, you know, it's, that is yeah. just really, really important to me. Yep, you know, and they got to be hungry though. Of if course, I'm not, I no, my, I'm with put you. my coaching with hat you. on. I would yeah. say, uh, Brett Bielema who's now, I think he's still at Illinois. Illinois. Yeah, and when he was at Wisconsin, we became friends and, and I followed him along the way. I asked him one time, I said, man, what are you looking for in a recruit? And he, I said, is it stars? And he goes, no, the first thing, I gotta know that that kid, it's really important to them football. Because if it's not really important to them, they won't do all the little things. If it is important, they'll go to school, their classes will be a deal, they'll do the working out, they'll do the extra things. Because they have to for the football. Yes. 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 I don't want, yeah. They don't want to give up. Football was important to me. Right. And I, and I did all the little things to mm-hmm. make sure that I didn't lose my position. And, uh, but, yeah, we've got to get kids that are hungry, that come in here, recognize a chance to play, play in a big conference, great campus, second to none, and, um, and, and get after it. I agree. Out, outside of looking in, Bert is one of the true treasures of college football. You made a lot of treasured memories for a lot of us. Absolutely. Thank you, yep. Thank you Bill. And around. you know what? And that is an absolutely great way to end this podcast. This is a really fun. <laughs> we could, we, could, we like, could go we, we on. Facts, we so. could go on and on and on. Anyway, Mustang Nation, this has been really fun for me. We've had now have both both halves of the Pony Express. Yep. And we need now to have Lance, we, need, we need to have. Lance, you're going to come on. You're going to tell everybody the importance of running that option because he knows how to do it. And I'd like to have all three of the Pony Express. At the same well, time. you know, actually, you know, Eric and I really, we Lance, we've really taken care of you. We we made sure that those lob pitches that you gave us, we took it to the house. We made sure we got a first down. So we made you number 11. Yes, that's how we did it. That was exactly how we drew up the pitch. Lance yeah. on the box. Just get it in the air. Don't what, roll what, it on the ground. What is his? I mean, I think his social security is like 23, 5, and 1 because that's his record as a college uh, yeah. quarterback or yeah. something. Anyway, so <laughs> anyway, this has been so fun. I'm so Thank glad you, you did this. This Thank is you. really fantastic. I look forward to coming back. I mean, Billy, thanks for doing this. This is like yeah. just fantastic. Thank you guys. Yeah. 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 Awesome being able to yeah. sit in on, on this one. So we've got yeah. the yeah. press coverage. Yeah. Appreciate yeah. you got it, man. Thank you. Coming on. Thanks. Okay. So, thanks Thank so you. much for everybody listening. We'll catch you next time with another edition of Walking Strong. Thanks for listening to the On the Pony Express podcast with Billy Embody. Follow us on your socials on X at SMU on three and on Instagram at on three SMU. And keep it locked to onthepony for more coverage.